Alright, what's going on you savages? So these past couple nights I've been night fishing really hard under the new moon and I work full time on top of that. So during the daylight hours I've just been working and sleeping and then obviously like I just said fishing the night time. So I don't have any new fishing content for you yet. So if you're looking for a new fishing video, sorry, this is going to be me talking. But if you leave, you might regret it because I'm going to throw out some pretty useful information that you might not have thought of. So on these night fishing trips, uh, me and my buddy have actually been doing pretty well. Um, I've been getting fish probably in the upper 30 pound class. So my buddy got a low 40 pound class fish. So these are not small fish we're dealing with. So I figured I'd show you the chunking rigs I'm using that can actually handle fish of this caliber and then how to successfully use circle hooks because it is a bit of a transition going from J-hooks to circle hooks. It definitely takes a little getting used to. Before I show you the rigs I use, I want to share kind of a cardinal rule I follow when it comes to fishing. And this has to do with your tackle and gear. And this is a pretty simple concept. And honestly, I still think not a lot of people do this. So my rule is no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm kayak fishing, shore fishing the rocks, chunking late at night for big stripers, freshwater fishing, I don't know why I'd be freshwater fishing, but no, regardless, any trip I'm going on, have all your gear and tackle ready to go, ready, keyword coming in here, before you go out on the trip. And what I mean by this, make sure you have no frayed line on your reel, make sure all your rods are rigged up and ready to go, make sure you got extra rigs, make sure you have all your bait squared away, any little detail you can think of should be ready to go. Because let me tell you, there is no worse feeling than rolling up on a crazy blitz or a really good bite and getting caught with your pants around your ankles. <laughs> that sucks. So before you head out, take the extra time, make sure everything is good to go. So when you're out on the rocks, the only thing you need to worry about is fishing and not fumbling around trying to tie a knot. And now onto the chunking rigs. Uh, I'm a firm believer in heavy tackle, especially when it comes to chunking. I know there's a lot of like light tackle enthusiasts out there and I get fighting a fish on light tackle is really fun. I've done it before. But when I'm chunking, I am targeting big striped bass. I'm trying to get the biggest bass imaginable out there when I'm throwing out chunks. So I have a rig that reflects that. I like to keep my rig strong, but I also like to keep them simple. So you only really need four things to tie this up. You need fluorocarbon leader, you need a circle hook, you need barrel swivels. This is empty, but you all know what a barrel swivel looks like. And this is a new addition I've been doing. You need a weight slide. All right, so here is the rig in all its glory. And obviously the pound test of the fluorocarbon leader plays a huge factor. Uh, back in my earlier days of chunking, I was using 50, but I've actually bumped it up to 80 pound test. And this may seem like overkill, but I'm gonna tell you why it's not overkill. So my main concern of losing a striped bass is not that it's so powerful that it'll overwhelm my pound test and cause it to snap and fail. I'm not worried about that. That's why you have drag. My drag is set to a limit where that just simply wouldn't happen. What I am worried about is big fish taking me up on the rocks and, uh, and snapping my leader. Big fish are smart and when they get hooked, they will more likely than not try and take you on an outcropping of rocks to try and get free. Just the other night actually, I hooked into, I think it was like a 42 inch, like mid 30 pound fish. Not an absolute monster, but guess what? Right when I hooked it, it darted right for the outcropping of rocks. So sure enough, when I finally landed this fish, my 80 pound fluorocarbon leader was frayed to shit, man. I mean, really bad. And that's because it was a smart fish and it tried to lose me on the rocks. So say I was using maybe a 20 or 30 pound fluorocarbon, ah, uh, might have been a different outcome. I might have lost that fish and it would have just been a fishtail. So the main reason for using a heavy leader is so that big smart fish don't fray you off on the rocks. As far as circle hook size goes, I usually use a 7 knot. Um, I recommend anywhere from a 7 to 8 knot. That seems to be a good chunking hook if you're going to be targeting big striped bass. But honestly, you could probably bump it up to 9 too if you really wanted. Anywhere between 7 and 9, you should be good. As far as knots goes, I'm not going to actually show you how I tie it. I actually hate tying knots. It's probably my least favorite part of preparing my gear. But it's pretty simple. The Florida hook is an improved clinch. The Florida barrel swivel is an improved clinch. And then you can either use an improved clinch from the barrel to braid connection, or you could use a polymer. Polymers are widely regarded as the better knot. They're a little more difficult to tie in my opinion. So I've used improved clinches in the past and I've honestly had no issues. So either one works in my opinion. And the last important piece of the puzzle is this bad boy, the weight slide. So slide this onto your main line before you tie your rig. So it's basically free falling. 
Um, in the past, I would just take, this is a bank sinker, but I would take an egg sinker and just put it direct on my braid, which is fine to begin with, but once that egg sinker starts getting beat up on the bottom, it'll start to get jagged edges and it'll eventually fray your braid down over time. Um, with the weight slide, this is all smooth around the edges, so it's going to give you no fraying at all, and it also let you swap out weights a lot quicker without having to re-rig. So I usually use a three ounce bank sinker, but uh, depending on current or where you fish, you might have to bump it up a little bit. And if you have to do that, like I said, just take it off and throw a new one on. Easy as that. All right, well, if you're still with me, we're on the final topic of this video, is how to successfully use a circle hook. And to be honest, circle hooks kind of work themselves, man. It's a lot easier to set the hook with a circle hook than a J hook. That's just my opinion, but I find it to be extremely true and I'm sure a lot of other guys will tell you the same. So the key with the circle hook is to not actually set the hook like that stereotypical like huge hook set like you would at the J hook. The key to a circle hook is to wait until you feel the weight of the fish and then all you need to do is start reeling in. So I'm gonna show you how it kind of works. So here's your bait sitting nice in the bottom of the ocean and here comes a big striped bass who's ready to eat. So what he's gonna do, he's gonna take your bait. You might not honestly feel this part this could be very, very subtle, so you might not even know this is going on. And here's what happens next. The majority of the time, when a fish takes the bait, he's going to turn his head. And when the head turns, it's a little hard to demonstrate with the cup. It's the turn of the head is when the circle hook gets out of the bait and catches the fish in the corner of the mouth almost every single time. And that is when you're going to feel the weight. You're going to feel that big, big pull on your rod. That's the fish taking your bait and then t running off with it, turning his head. So during that head turn, he's probably gonna set the hook himself. But once you feel that weight, all you gotta do, man, is just start reeling in, and that fish is gonna be there 90% of the time. This is my third one. Circle hook got him good, so get him back in, man. Circle hooks, doing the trick, getting him right in the lip. If, that was, if I dropped that down with a J hook, there's like a decent chance that this would've been gut hooked. These things stink, dude. Circle hook got him right in the lip though. Oh, easy. Whoa, whoa, oh my god. Look at that. Circle hook got him right in the side of the mouth. And looking back, I used to use J hooks a lot when I was chunking, and there was a high, high gut hook rate. I'm thinking like one out of maybe every four striper, or maybe after even every three stripers, came up with a hook in his guts. And sometimes you can save them, but sometimes you can't. So, so j hooks can be devastating on the striped bass population. So I think it's really important to start using circle hooks. And not only just from a conservational standpoint, it's just easier to fish with circle hooks. And yeah, that's pretty much it, man. I just wanted to put into detail the exact chunking rigs I use that can handle big fish. Uh, and granted, this I'm not a professional. I just do this recreationally. So I'm sure there's guys out there who know what they're doing more than I do that might do something differently than me, that works. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, but if you're new to chunking or you want to start doing it more seriously, I can guarantee you, if you use a rig similar to this, you will not be losing big fish. If you want to see some of the pictures from big stripers I've been getting into lately, uh, you can find it on my Instagram. But new content coming out this weekend, so you don't have to watch an entire video of me just talking into the camera. So, uh, till next time.